Greetings, everyone. I'm excited to welcome Jakob Schuster, CEO and co-founder at Elf.ai. Jakob, welcome to the show. Hi, man. Thank you for having me. Yeah, great to have you here. Let's dive right in. Tell us a little bit about your background. Yeah, so, I mean, we're talking about SaaS community, but I'm actually not from this environment at all because I've studied economics and political science, and I came to the SaaS world actually by accident. Because when we founded our company, it was initially an CSR activity of our digital marketing company. But after a while, we saw that there is a potential for, for business and for some additional development. So we decided to split the company and to make Elf.ai. Okay. So you, so you said SaaS world by accident and you had or still have a digital marketing company? Not actually. Yeah. I, I was a former employee of the, okay. of the company. And I mean, we can talk about a little bit about the history of the, our company and about the project, because we initially started after the war in Ukraine in 2022, when Russia inv invaded Ukraine and we saw a huge spike of hateful and disinformation comments, especially in Europe and also especially in Slovakia. And we saw as a digital marketing company that our clients were under the huge number of toxic comments and a huge number of trolls and all these kind of things. I mean, don't take it wrong. Disinformation and hateful comments were a problem even before the war. We saw COVID, we saw all different things, but after the invasion, we saw a huge, huge spike. So we saw that, okay, so we are communication company and we can do some communication campaign where, where the outcome is not very visible, we, we might say, or is not so impactful. And we saw that especially media and public institutions, they had a huge problem with the toxic comments under the social media posts. So we saw this problem and we come up with the opportunity. I mean, we come up with a solution that initially we hired a couple of people that were going through the comments and that, that were trying to sort the comments by, by the topics, but after a couple of months, when we saw that there's a demand for this kind of service and where we saw that, yeah, we want to extend our client base. We want to extend our services, but when we were doing all the things just by humans, it was not scalable. Back then in, I would say summer 2022, we were doing about quarter mil of comments per month. But we were having 70, no, I'm sorry, 47 people doing content moderation. And we saw that like, this is not scalable. Mm -hmm. So we decided to uh, create the first models. It was even before this huge, a uh, huge boom of AI and open AI and, and everything. And we decided, yeah, we need some automatization, but still we want to maintain a high quality of content moderation. So we, we come up with this approach of combination of artificial intelligence and human moderators. Okay. Yeah. Appreciate that background. And so let's talk about Elf.ai. What products and or services does Elf.ai offer? Yes, uh, we offer uh, content moderation for social media, but also for the web, web pages or anything that can be integrating integrated through APIs. So we are very much flexible in this kind of environment and we provide content moderation that combines artificial intelligence and also human moderators. What is unique about this approach is that we are trying to localize our service, which means that we're training models for the specific languages and for the specific social context that's on the technological side and on the human side is that we are creating the network of 
content moderation mo moderators in those countries by which we want to maintain a high quality of content moderation because you cannot do content moderation if you don't have the social context, if you don't understand the nuances, if you don't understand the irony and all these kind of things. So, yeah. Okay. And to give us a use case here. Is this, are these companies, influencers, anybody that can use your product? Who are you trying to target with Elf.ai? Yes, our primary customers are media, media houses, and also public institutions. But generally speaking, our target customers are anyone who has big number of comments on their social media or their web, web page. Okay. In, so say if I'm a media house, you know, lots of comments on my, I don't know, my Twitter X page or what, you know, LinkedIn or whatever it might be. You're moderating that. You're looking through that with AI to flag maybe hateful comments, for example. And then what happens next? Yes, yes, exactly. Then the process is a little bit more complicated, but mm -hmm. let, let me walk you through it really quickly. In the first step, the AI have a look on the comment and is trying to trying to tell if it was something that it has been before or it haven't, if we had enough data that we can make prediction and we can make an action, AI do that action automatically. But if there is not a certain rate, which is quite strict, 95% or more, then the comment goes to the human moderator who will decide if the comment stays or if it needs to be taken down. Okay. Okay. So yeah, that makes a ton of sense. So reviewing. So if, if you're a company, media house, public institution with tons of comments, it can review that and then hand it over to a human moderator for further action. So in, in right now, are you after, you know, global companies right now, local companies, who are you trying to target here? <laughs> yeah. Um, very good question. Right now, we are present in the Central Europe, especially in V4, in Slovakia, Czech Republic, uh, Poland. And we are trying to expand, expand to Western countries as well. But we see a huge potential also in the smaller countries in the CE region, because that's actually the space where is the problem most visible, because usually the Big tech companies like Meta or, or on Twitter or whatever, they don't focus so much on those small countries where are all different kind of languages that are very similar, but very different in a, a different ways. And it's not very profitable for them to build this kind of infrastructure from the technological side, but also from the human side. But we see that this, our, our mission is to make online space better place. And we cannot close our eyes on these kind of problems just because it's hard to develop or is hard to create these kind of operations. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate that, that insight. And, and, and yeah, interesting about the smaller countries and the bigger brands are like meta not focusing on that, which, yeah, that's really interesting. So what year did you found Elf.ai? So we, we initially started in 2022 as a CSR project of our, our digital marketing company, but we split around, it, it was last year, 2023, June. Okay. Okay. And then do you have a headquarters location? Are you all virtual? We have a headquarters in Bratislava, but our content moderators are hundred percent remote, so they can work from anywhere they want, but we are trying to maintain the quality that people from, uh, I would say Czech Republic or Germany they work on the project that is located in that country. So we can main maintain 
the quality and the okay. quality of that visit. Yeah, it makes sense. And then what's your current team size? We have 25 people from which there are 17 content moderators, you know, 11 from to Slovakia, five to Czech Republic, and there are a one and we are expanding more to the Poland and uh, to the other countries. And then we have our developers, our sales team and our operations. So that's okay. 25. Five ish people right now. Okay. And then anything you want to share around your ARR revenue range? Yeah, we are right now doing oh, 100,000 euros per, per month, per, okay. per year. Sorry. Oh, per year. Okay. So 100K euros yeah. per year right now. And then tell us a little bit about your go to market motion. How are you finding these customers? Yeah, that's a very good question because uh, right now in the in, in the Europe, we see that something called Digital Services Act is going in place, which is um, this piece of regulation made by the European Union, which forces providers of social platforms and also any providers of any online space to do content moderation. So we see that in the Europe, we see push from the governmental side to, to address this problem. So we can see that this topic is going more public and people are getting more and more aware of the importance of content moderation and the importance of taking care of their online space. So that's, that's one thing that actually help us. But on the other hand, there are all these kind of traditional things like cold calling cold mailing and all these kind of PR activities, attending on the conferences and all the basic stuff, I would yeah. say. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. And then let's switch to the fundraising front. How much capital have you raised to date? Yes. So we started initially with 300,000 euros, which was invested by our co-founder Milan Lubetz. And then we recently raised another half a million of euros by venture capital called Crowdberry Esprit Venture Fund. Okay. So bootstrapped, co-founder invested, and then just raised 500k euros. And so in that raise for that, and I don't know if it was you know, a pre-seed or seed, what led you, you know, what were there triggers or milestones that led you to that 500k euro raise? I mean, the good side and good sign to investors were that we had revenue from day one. We haven't had any problem of showing the importance and also showing them that people are willing to pay for this kind of service. So we had revenue for, from day one and we were increasing that month to month and that was actually very, very helpful thing that helped us to, in this kind of negotiations with the investors that, yeah, you can see that people want that, people want to pay for that, and we need more, more capital to expand our services to different countries and different markets. Okay. In, in, in that 500k raise, any fundraising lessons that you'd like to share with other founders who may be considering that initial fundraising uh, round? Yes, yes. V very good question. And I was thinking about this a lot because next week I'm attending one, one conference on this topic and probably the most important thing, but it's not something new, is that you need to focus on the problem because if you're not focusing on the problem, then your product doesn't have meaning, you know, like mm -hmm. if you have really good insights about the problem that your customers are having, then you can build your product product around that. Don't build product product just for the product sake, you know, mm -hmm. and that's something that everybody wants to see because every investor wants to see that. Yes, you're uh, resolving something 
real. And if you're re resolving something real and you scenario A, making, making money for the clients or scenario B, you're saving them time, then people are willing to pay for that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Appreciate that insight that, yeah, yeah. Focus on the problem makes a ton of sense. So Jakob, at the current stage of your business, do you have a favorite number or metric that you're focused on to guide the business? Yes. Well, we are right now focusing on two things that are very easily measurable. And that's a number of comments that is processed by our, by us. And then also the revenue, of course. And right now we are somewhere around 1.5 million comments per month. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's a, that's a ton. So yeah, I really appreciate your time today and sharing your experiences. So what's coming up next for Elf.ai? Yeah, we, we're right now trying to, as we were talking about, expand our services to different countries. And we see that uh, we want to try different go-to-market strategies to different markets to test what is the most the successful way how to approach the new market. So that's one thing. Another thing is also we were doing very, very in-depth research with our current clients about some possible extensions of our services. So we have some very good insights for our next development. So right now we are creating the first MVPs to the production so we can, we can show that to our customers and see what is going to be the next go thing to our development. All right. That's great. Exciting. So yeah, again, really appreciate your time sharing your experiences today. If listeners would like to learn more about your company, where should we send them online? Yeah, you can find us on the Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. It's always elf.ai. E L V dot AI and also the web page. All right. Well, perfect. So check out elf, E L V dot AI if you'd like to learn more. And, and again, Jakob, really appreciate your time today. Thank you for having me.